Hi there, my name is Stephen Chu and I'm a professor of psychology. I study how to improve teaching and learning. This is the first in a series of videos I'm creating on helping students to make the academic transition to college level work. I'm making these videos uh, for two reasons. Number one, uh, even under the best of circumstances, uh, many students struggle with the transition from high school to college or from workforce uh, to college or even uh, transferring from a two-year to a four-year institution. So what I'm going to talk about uh, should be of special use uh, to students making that transition. But secondly, uh, we've been going through a pandemic for the last year and a half, which has disrupted uh, regular educational practice. We all had to transition to remote learning um, back in the spring of 2020. Uh, last year, we had to do remote or hybrid uh, learning or online learning of, of some sort. Uh, and now this fall, most schools are planning to go back to regular face-to-face uh, -face classes or online classes. So we had to make the transition to remote learning. Now we're going to make the transition back uh, to more traditional learning. And um, I know myself and for most faculty, we made a lot of changes in the way we taught when we went to remote learning. I covered, uh, for example, much less material, probably 25 to 30% less material in uh, a class um, to make it um, uh, more flexible and adaptable for students. I also offered more flexibility in, uh, in assessments and assignments uh, to uh, help students to uh, uh, cope with uh, the challenges that the pandemic presented in their, uh, their personal lives. And as we go back to more uh, traditional face-to-face -face or online learning, then we're probably going to go back to more traditional uh, coverage of material and more traditional assessments. So we're all going to be making a transition back to more uh, traditional kinds of, of learning. And I think uh, this video will help us to make that transition. So in this first video, I'm going to talk about the transition uh, primarily from high school uh, to, to college, especially those high school students who were seniors last year and did remote learning, uh, and now they're having to make the transition to uh, uh, more traditional face-to-face -face or online learning uh, in the fall. Let's talk about the difference between the context of uh, high school and college. First of all, let's talk about whether this is a problem or not. Uh, if you look at surveys uh, uh, before the pandemic, you will see that uh, even before the pandemic, uh, most faculty felt that students were not adequately prepared for college level work. Uh, one survey a few years ago found that 96% of faculty at two-year schools felt that their students were inadequately prepared for college level work in at least one area, and 88% of faculty at four-year schools felt the same way. So the vast majority of, of faculty who teach first-year students uh, feel like uh, most of their students are not prepared in at least one area. If you ask the students themselves, they'll report much the same thing. The same survey of uh, first year uh, college students found that almost half of them felt like they were not adequately prepared for college level work in at least one area. And if you look at um, uh, minorities, first generation college students, uh, and students who uh, are taking multiple remedial courses, uh, that uh, 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 rate is, is actually much lower. Uh, the overall rate, uh, uh, completion rate uh, for college is 59% after six years. In other words, if you look at a um, uh, incoming class of college students after six years, uh, only 59% of them will have graduated with a four-year uh, degree. And that rate lo uh, is lower for minorities, first generation uh, college students and college students who started with multiple remedial courses. Now, why might that be? You hear a lot about the dumbing down of high schools, but I don't really think that's the issue. I know many dedicated and skillful high school uh, teachers. I think the difference has uh, to do with the context of uh, uh, between high school and college. There are some key differences between high school and college learning context. So I can divide them into three different areas, contact hours, high school versus college teachers, and other differences. So let's look at those three. Okay, first of all is the sheer number of contact hours uh, between high school uh, and college. So in high school, you're often in the same course four or five times a week, and a course will take the entire year. In college, you're uh, in class much less, maybe twice or two or three times 
uh, a week. Uh, and this uh, course uh, is only lasts a semester rather than the whole year, but it covers at least as much, if not more material in the same amount of time. So on average, uh, there's about a third of the contact hours with teachers in college than there is in high school. And this has uh, tremendous implications for, for student learning. There's much less scaffolding by, uh, what I mean by that is much less direct instruction. You're getting much less direct instruction from the teacher about the concepts. There's many fewer learning activities, many fewer examples, many fewer worksheets uh, uh, to complete, um, many fewer uh, feedback opportunities where uh, the faculty or, or the teacher is giving you feedback about whether your concept, uh, is, your understanding of a concept is correct or not. Uh, and there are many fewer assessments in, uh, in college as, as well. In high school, you have multiple assessments uh, for lower stakes in college, you may have uh, two or three assessments, each of them uh, worth 25-30% um, of your grade. So the sheer number of contact hours uh, makes a huge difference. This means that you have to uh, do more independent learning. You have fewer opportunities for feedback, fewer opportunities to actually uh, sort of practice using your knowledge. Uh, and that means that the learning is going to be much slower and more effortful in college than it was in, in high school. The second difference has to do with high school teachers versus college teachers. High school teachers are trained teachers. They have a uh, certification. They've gone to a school of education and they have been trained to teach and then they specialize in an area. College teachers have specialized in an area and then uh, they teach that area. Um, so their first priority is actually is their discipline and then teaching uh, comes uh, after that. So college faculty are less well trained to teach. And in many cases, they may be less motivated to teach because college faculty are, have other responsibilities, such as doing research and scholarship, and that may be a higher priority for them. Okay, so they're less likely to prioritize uh, student learning. And because uh, they are scholars of their field, their expectations about you know, what constitutes uh, adequate student learning for a course is probably deeper uh, than it is for high school, um, high school teachers. So you have uh, college teachers who are less well trained to teach. They may be less motivated to teach, but they require a deeper level of understanding among uh, their students. OK, and then there are other differences. There's less peer social support. Uh, so in high school, oftentimes you're with students uh, in most all your the same students, all your classes. You may have had the same uh, students, uh, you know, since you were a child in, in the same school. Uh, in college, uh, you have different uh, uh, students in different classes. You may not know anyone in, in uh, any of your classes. You have to get to, to know them. Then finally, in high school, there's a culture of completion, uh, whereas in college, there's a culture of access. In high school, they're trying to get as many students uh, through high school as possible. There's an emphasis on that, uh, and that uh, emphasis is lacking in high school or is lacking in college. Imagine a college or imagine a high school that had a 59% completion rate after six years. That high school would not be considered successful, but that's the norm uh, for college level work. So there is a, a huge difference between um, the academic context or high school. Uh, and college, and that can have uh, very important uh, implications. So here are uh, four common misconceptions that students have that undermine their academic success in, uh, in college. I call them beliefs about learning that make you stupid, and these can flow from that difference uh, in academic context. The first one is learning is fast. Uh, students uh, get used to uh, the, the high number of contact hours and learning activities in high school. So when they study for an exam, uh, they've already learned a lot because uh, they've simply gone to class. They've been part of the class. In college, uh, where there's much more independent learning, it's much uh, more laborious and, and it uh, takes much longer to prepare for an exam. So if you start like a day or two before that you may be able to get away with that in high school, but you probably can't get away with that uh, in college. Uh, learning is, is much uh, uh, more effortful. It takes much longer than most students uh, uh, assume. 
And as a result, they tend to wait too late to start an assignment or to prepare for an exam. They end up cramming and they end up doing really poorly. Now, if they do poorly, uh, they may come to the belief that uh, being good at a subject is a matter of inborn talent rather than hard work. They look for something that they're intuitively, naturally uh, good at. But in college, you have to uh, put in the work no matter what you do. Uh, now, you may have a better background in a certain area, which is going to help you. But at some point, you're going to have to uh, uh, put out that effort. Uh, your ability, your achievement is a matter of, of uh, how hard you work and um, how well you study. And we'll talk more about that a little later on in one of the uh, succeeding videos. Now, another area that uh, students often have trouble with is that they believe that knowledge is composed of isolated facts. And this uh, relates to the fact that high school teachers are teachers who specialize in subjects versus college professors who are uh, subject matter experts uh, who teach. Um, when you learn in high school, you may learn a series of, of facts and uh, you learn to sort of memorize those facts about a particular area. Uh, college professors, though, uh, tend to have highly interrelated, uh, very complex uh, 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 schemes of understanding for a concept. So this, for example, is attention. Uh, and you may, uh, in high school, you may have learned like these series of, of, uh, of facts about attention. But college professors tend to think about attention in a more complex, interrelated way. And this is the way they test. Uh, they test for your ability to reason through uh, uh, arguments and to apply knowledge. If you memorize facts as unrelated uh, uh, pieces of information, you're going to do very poorly uh, at that, on that exam. All right. And then the last one is uh, I'm really good at multitasking, especially during class or studying. Uh, we're not uh, uh, good at multitasking. Uh, and uh, when you're studying uh, on your own, when you have very little uh, uh, structural support from like going to class multiple times, uh, when you're learning independently, uh, multitasking uh, is especially, uh, especially uh, deleterious to your, your learning. So uh, multitasking really hurts you, especially when uh, the emphasis on independent learning, uh, which it, it really is in, in college. So that's the difference between uh, the high school context and the college context. In the next video, we'll be talking about how to cope uh, more successfully with the college level context through the development of, of good habits. I'll see you on the next video.